Coach, when you have a team that has the playoff mindset and they know what they're looking forward to, how do you kind of help them stay in that playoff mindset, knowing that they're playing against teams that aren't really in the playoff chase? Well, we talked about that this morning, uh, the ability to break it down into smaller games, uh, winning different segments of the season. So we have 16 left and helping these guys understand what, what, each, what each piece of the game is preparing you for. Uh, and then that's when it goes back to just controlling what you can control and doing the things that are setting to our standard, no matter who we play against. Your next two games are against the Raptors, one here, one back in Orlando. You had two of these way back in the se way back earlier in the season against Chicago and then Boston. The fact that this is even closer to the postseason and it's a home and home, how do you approach that or how do you kind of simulate that playoff feel, that mini series, if you will? Well, that's a great point right there, BD. I, I really do believe that it, it, it sets you up for that scenario, understanding the adjustments you need to make from one game to the next, uh, the things that you did well, the things that you need to obviously g grow and improve on. So being able to have that, you know, in this point of the season with, of understanding what they're capable and knowing what to do is very important for this group. The fact that the Raptors look very different from the last time you faced them, they're missing key pieces tonight. How do you prepare for a team that's, you know, they were sellers at the deadline, they made a lot of trades since then, different pieces are here, how do you prepare for a team like that? We, it's continued. It has to be about us, the things that we're trying to accomplish, how we're trying to play. I mean, this is a, still a good basketball team, the way in which they play. You know, since the trade, they're still no, they're number one in fast break points, uh, as well as in their wins. They're getting 58 points in the paint. Uh, so I think they have a capable guys that are out there able to score. Quickly's playing at a high level. Uh, Trent's been out for a game or two, but he's able to knock down threes. Grady Dick is playing good basketball. And, you know, they're always the wild card that they have is Kelly Olenek that does a great job of uh, facilitating the offense but also making shots and making it tough on on, on, on the defense you know, what, what type of challenge will Kelly be that he was someone they acquired as in a trade this season well his ability to knock down shots uh, you know playmaking facilitating he has a, it does a great job of recognizing how the defense is being played uh, he's keepers on the dribble handoffs uh, but just his ability to, to change out and space the floor as well so we've got to do a great job communicating with one another uh, be physical without fouling uh, and make sure that we play our brand of basketball and set the tone. Jay, I mentioned, you know, when everyone's healthy and you walk in the locker room and all the jerseys are there and everyone's available to play, there's a different energy. Do you notice that when players, everyone's available and, and the fact that everyone's healthy right now, it seems? Absolutely. I, I think it's so great when we have all of our guys available. There's nothing to be, they can't say enough about being healthy in the NBA, especially at this stretch of the season. Uh, being able to find the right rhythm, the right chemistry, the right flow of, of guys in and out of the game, I think is so great for this group as well as, you know, as, as we move forward. You guys shoot a high three-point percentage. Is there something specific you guys are doing well in those games that allows you to shoot just a good percentage? Well, I think it's the ball movement. It's the trust. It's the the ability to recognize how the defenses are playing. Uh, but it's also recognizing, you know, being it, when you're open, step into your shot with confidence and knock it down. Uh, we had a ton of great looks in our last game. The ball was moving. The ball was popping. I joked with guys this morning that you know we had 29 assists. We could have had 34 if you know guys would have made some shots. Uh, but I think, you know, that's that's the attitude we want to have. When you're open, you know, you're confident enough and you put the work in, let it fly. Do you have a number of assists that you look for? I'll take 29 and 30 and up. That's what I'd like. 30 assists would be beautiful for us on a given night. And then sometimes that's going to depend on if the ball's going in or not. But our willingness and our ability to share and pass the basketball is very key. Thanks. Mo Coach kind of talked a little bit about how you guys spoke this morning, how even though you guys are in a playoff chase, keeping that intensity going against teams that aren't really in the playoff chase, how do you guys do that? Or how do you focus knowing that you're going to have to keep that mindset even though you're going against teams that aren't really in that playoff chase? Well, I think you just focus. Uh, Randy, come on. Um, I think just a little, like you put all your effort and energy in what you do. Um, you focus all, like all year on what you do. Obviously there's tweaks and turns here in the game plan according to who you're playing, but everybody in this league can play. You gotta take everybody serious. And uh, I think that's what how we have approached every game so far. And uh, we gotta continue to improve and it's on the coaches and on us to take that serious. The next two games are against the Raptors, one here, one in Orlando. You guys had mini series against Chicago and Boston earlier in the year, but the fact that these these two games are closer to the playoffs, how do you approach that and maybe simulate that?
that playoff like, you know, traveling back and forth facing the same team in a matter of a couple of days? Yeah, obviously, when you play the same team within two days, it's it's a little more, it's a little easy, easier to focus on adjustments and all that stuff, but I'm not sure if we're quite there yet, uh, to be honest with you. I've never been in the playoffs, so I don't really know how that stuff feels anyway. I'm just trying to focus day by day um, on what's ahead, um, not looking at the standards, standings too much and just kind of taking the day for what it is and see where we end up. The fact that the Raptors have made so many different trades, they added a guy like Kelly Olenek in there yeah. in the mix. What challenges does Kelly offer? <laughs> Kelly, Kelly can hoop. I mean, uh, I love, I, I love Ko. He's, uh, he's he's got some point. serious game. As a great playmaker, um, can shoot the basket, which obviously makes it a lot different, more difficult to guard the whole the whole thing. Um, but I could, I, you can just tell I love Ko because he loves the game of basketball, and that's why he plays. And that's uh, fun to watch. In games where you guys shoot a good three point percentage, is there something specific you guys you think you're doing well to shoot a good percentage? Or is it just the ball? It's a great question. I don't know. Um, I'm not a big analytics guy anyway, but I think I want to emphasize on emphasis that we've uh, been focusing on is moving the ball, uh, playing together. And I think when we do that, um, we create easier shots and easier shots equal higher percentage. So I think there's a correlation there if we play together and uh, play for each other and let the ball pop.